In this lesson, we will start our build-up animation and we will take a look how we can animate properties over time in After Effects. So the first element that I want to animate is actually our circle here. So let's select our circle and our timeline and just for now, let's solo it by clicking our solo switch here. Now I want to turn on my transparency grid that we can see what's going on here. Now let's move our cursor, our time indicator, to frame number one. By the way, you can navigate your time indicator to the beginning of a layer by, if I drag it out here now, by pressing I on the keyboard. And if I press O on the keyboard, the time indicator will move to the out point of this layer. So let's press I on the keyboard again with our circle layer selected to move our time indicator to frame zero. On my circle, I want to animate two properties. I want to animate my rotation and my scale. So let's remember our keyboard shortcuts. Let's select the layer and press R on the keyboard to reveal the rotation property. Now I hold down Shift and I press S to add the scale properties. What I want to do now is I want to animate the scale and the rotation over the first 12 frames of our project. So to do this, I just move forward for 12 frames, therefore I hold down shift and press the page down button. Once this will move forward 10 frames and then I press the page down button one more time and one more time. And you see now we move forward two single frames. So with the page down and page up buttons, you can move forward or backwards for one frame. And if you hold down shift, you can increase the steps to 10. Let's make sure that our time indicator sits on 12 frames and then we can create a keyframe for the scale and we can create a keyframe for the rotation by clicking on these stopwatch icons here. So whenever you see one of these stopwatch icons in After Effects, then this tells you that you can create animations and that you can set keyframes for this property. Now you see that these symbols turned blue and you also see that here keyframes appeared. Now we know, okay, on this layer we have keyframes, so an animation is happening. But right now, of course, nothing is happening because we only have one keyframe, so nothing is changing. Now let's move our time indicator to our in point. Let's press I on our keyboard and let's set the scale to a value of zero. I just click in and type in zero and press enter. And you see what After Effects did. After Effects automatically created a second keyframe here. And our circle disappeared, of course, because now the scale is set to zero. And if I move my time indicator now, you see that the circle is animating or scaling up over time. And this is exactly what I want to do. Be a little bit careful. When you activated the time very stopwatch, as it's called, on a layer, whenever you change something, after Effects will create a new keyframe. So when my time indicator is here now, let's say around here, and I do any change here with this value, you see that After Effects will create a keyframe automatically. So it will remember all the changes through keyframes. So you have to be a little bit careful and aware of what you are doing when the stopwatch symbol is activated. To delete a keyframe, you can come in here and select it. You can also click and drag to select more keyframes and then simply press delete on your keyboard. Now this keyframe is gone. Let's come back to our in point. So let's select the layer again. Let's press I on the keyboard and let's set a rotation value. In my case, I want to rotate it for 360 degrees. So I want to set this here to minus one. And then you see that our circle will spin in over 12 frames and scale up. So this is our first animation. Now what I want to do is I want to solo my text layers. So let's click the solo switch for our two text layers and then they are visible. What I want to achieve now is that my text layers rotate with my circle layer. And therefore we will use a technique that's called parenting. Parenting can be very useful and you can achieve really cool things with parenting. You see that right here in this panel we have the parent option. If this is not visible, then you can toggle the switches down here. Maybe it looks a little bit different in your layout, but you can press this toggle modes here, toggle switches, 
and then everything should appear. The keyboard shortcut for these changes is F4, so you can toggle between different settings in here. Let's make sure that we are uh, in this layout and that our parent column is visible here. If the parent column is not visible in either of these modes, so if you press F4 and the parent column is not visible in any of these settings, then you can come up here, you can right click, and then you can choose the columns. You see that there are a few columns that are not visible right now. Make sure that the parent column is visible. Now what we want to do is we want to position our time indicator exactly on the second keyframe here. You can do this by clicking these little arrows here. You see now I can click and then After Effects will move the time indicator to my last keyframe. And you see that if these are blue, then it means, okay, you are now exactly on a position where a keyframe is set. And if I click here one more time, you see that After Effects will jump to our first keyframe. You can navigate through your keyframes using these small arrows. You can also use a keyboard shortcut. And the keyboard shortcut is the J key for the previous keyframe and K for the next keyframe. So let's jump to our second keyframe here. And what we want to do now is we want to parent our two text layers to our circle. To parent layers, you simply click on this little icon here, left click and hold and now drag this icon to our circle layer. And now you see that After Effects shows us, okay, this layer is parented to our layer number four with the name circle. So let's do the same for our first text layer and let's select the pick whip tool as it's called, click and drag and select our circle layer. What this did now, it made our text layers a child of our circle layer. So they will move with my circle layer. They will take over the scale properties and they will take over the rotation properties and the position properties. Whatever you change on the circle layer will affect these two layers as well. And if we take a look now and take our time indicator, you see that now these layers are scaling and rotating together with our circle layer. And we didn't even have to add keyframes to them. Okay, so far so good. We created our first simple animation. Now let's animate a few more elements. Let's unsolo all these layers that everything is visible again. And now what I want to do is I want to hide my circle layer. I want to hide my two text layers because they are already animated. And I also want to hide my brush layer and my splatter video layer because these are also already animated. And I only want to have these uh, layers visible that are not animated yet. And we will create quick animations for these. So first of all, let's take a look at our watercolor stain one PSD. Let's press I on our keyboard to jump to the in point of our layer. And now let's press S on the keyboard to get our scale property. Now I want to animate the scale here. So let's say this should scale up pretty fast. Don't know, maybe 10 frames. So let's hold down shift and let's press the page down key to move forward for 10 frames. And now let's set a keyframe here by clicking this stopwatch icon. Let's press I on our keyboard to jump back to frame zero and let's type in zero into our scale options here. And now you see we have this small or quick scaling. Now let's move down to our watercolor stain number two. Let's press S on our keyboard to reveal the scale properties and let's Move in for 10 frames, hold down shift, page down, and then set a keyframe for the scale property here. Press I on the keyboard to jump back to the in point and set this to zero. And now you see we created two more animations. But what I don't like now is that these are scaling together. So I want the watercolor stain number two to scale up first and then I want watercolor stain number one to come in. So what we can do now is we can shift our keyframes a bit. So let's zoom in here a little bit. And now let's select the keyframes on our watercolor stain layer by simply clicking in here into this area and dragging. Now you can select all the keyframes. Now we can take one of the keyframes, click and drag it out. So let's say we want to move this forward for two frames approximately. And let's take a look what this does now. And you see now the first stain is scaling in and then the second one is following. 
And what I want to do now as well is I want to set the in point of our layer to my first keyframe. So let's select our watercolor stain one layer. Let's press K on our keyboard, let our time indicator moves to the first keyframe. Now we can come in here to the endpoint and you see that now the mouse cursor and you see that now the cursor changes and now I can click and hold and drag and just move my endpoint right here. Just that I know that this layer will start animating right here. Now, if I want to hide the keyframes again, I could either come in here and click this little triangle, this little arrow, or you can also select the layer and press U on your keyboard. U is the shortcut to reveal or to hide all keyframes on one layer. So if I select my circle and press U, you see that After Effects displays both keyframes, both values or properties that have been animated. If you press U again, it will close the layer. If no layer is selected in your project and you press U, then After Effects will show you all the keyframes that are available in this project. Let's press U again to close this down. Now let's make sure that we enable our circle and that we enable our two text layers, make them visible again by clicking the eye swatches. And now let's take a look by clicking and dragging on our time indicator and you see everything is now scaling up. What I do not like now is that these two paint splatters scale up at the same time as my circle. And I want the circle to come in first. So what we can do now is we can take our two layers by simply selecting the first one, hold down control and select the second one. And now let's say we want to move them forward for, I don't know, two or three frames. So let's click and drag and let's move them forward let's say for three frames for now and now you see my circle is scaling and then these come in a little bit later okay so far so good now let's animate our last element here and this is the after effects logo what i want to do with the logo here i want it to animate in from this side so it should travel in here and maybe also rotate while it's coming in here. So what we can do here, we can come to a time where the logo should already be visible. So let's say around one second or maybe at one and a half seconds. So let's move our time indicator to one minute and 12 frames or one second and 12 frames. And let's select our After Effects logo layer. Let's press P for position Let's press Shift and R for rotation and let's set keyframes right on one second and 12 frames for the position and for the rotation. Now let's say I want this to start animating when all the other things are revealed and I will need some more time after these elements set because I also want to animate in the brush and the splatter. So let's say at around one second, I will start the animation for our logo. We can come in here and shift the keyframes any time. So let's select our layer here and drag it out. And you see that After Effects now creates this animation path. And if you hold down shift, it will constrain it to one of the axes. In this case, I want to constrain it on the X axis. So let's drag it out here just that it is not visible in our screen anymore or in our uh, composition and let's let the mouse button go and you see now what we have got here is a so-called animation path now if we scroll through our timeline you see that now our icon or our logo is traveling in from the right side of our screen to make this a little bit more interesting i also want to add a rotation let's say i want this to rotate in maybe one full rotation so i come to my first keyframe here and i set this to let's say one full rotation let's see whether this works and i think that this works pretty good Okay, so now I'm satisfied with this animation as well. Now let's bring in our last two elements. Let's bring in our brush and let's bring in our paint splatters. And you know that these are already animated. So we do not have to add any keyframes here. We just want to position these in time. So let's start with our brush PNG sequence. I want the brush to appear 
as soon as the elements are set. So you see, I can now come in here to my second water stain, press U on my keyboard to reveal the keyframes. Now I can press K on my keyboard to move exactly to this keyframe here. And now I can select my brush layer and drag it over so that the in point is set to approximately right here. Maybe it should start a little bit earlier so that these overlap a little bit like so think that this is okay and now I want to oops and I'll double click so let's close this layer now I want to drag this over here too and let's say that this animation should start right here at this point in time okay so now we are finished with our basic animation and now it's a good time to save our project again so let's come to file in my case i will choose save as you can just save it or increment and save and i want to override my project number seven right here and click save okay override it that's good and in the next video we will take a look how we can create previews and preview our animations in after effects